there, they're basically the alpha, and then you've got <coughs> other varieties of leek. This particular form of leek that we've got is a clumping leek. It actually produces little offsets like this. Like one there. And so you can actually have your leek and eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> so you can harvest and it just produces lots of little ones. Mm -hmm. And they also do produce um, small bulbs as well, which are tiny little bulbs that's so big, almost like a pea. Mm -hmm. And they'll just keep producing. The crop. And that's a, so a totally different form. And then there's this one here which we've found, which is another type of leek. I haven't got a big one to show you. Um, that'll get to about this size in a season, but it actually produces, it's what they call a top set leek. So it's like the uh, the walking onion. It actually on top of the flower stem, it'll produce little bulbs. And so you can grab these bulbs and just chuck them and they'll regrow. Really or they'll plant themselves. So there's all this stuff going on with, with the leek family. It's just fascinating. <laughs> but um, they're having a lot of trouble trying to differentiate because they're all the same family. Mm. And so they're, um, yeah, they're, it's a lot of, confu lot of confusion. In there. And all the, um, as far as cooking and eating and nutrient levels and things, extremely good for you. Really high in phytonutrients, um, but it's in the greens. Everything that we chuck, chuck away at the supermarket, <laughs> that's where it is. And leeks will keep, um, they keep breathing in the crisper drawer. And when you've harvested them, so they lose their, their sugars and their phytonutrients really, really quickly. Um, after a week, there's virtually nothing left. So you've got to eat them in, in two or three days. They start to, their nutrient levels just drop. Mm. So yeah, so it's better to grow. I would argue a perennial leaf mm. in your garden. You mm. pick it when it's fresh, and you get to get that full whack mm. of goodness. Mm. So how do you harvest this thing? You wait until they grow up like like a leek. And you just take that off the boat. Then let. You know, it'll work. Yeah, after a while. If you put to buy one plant, I'd recommend it leave, leave it grow yep. for a year. Yep. And it'll produce offsets depending on the type. Mm -hmm. And then you just harvest it like that because they'll regrow. But you could just harvest a leaf, leaf or two at a time. Absolutely. Too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're yeah. going to get that flavour. Yeah. It's just, as far as the supermarket's concerned, that's not good. No. They want you to harvest the whole thing because they're just growing annual leaks. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So. More of the same, but the, the goodness is all in this stuff, and the flavours in this too. Mm. Really, really good for you. I won't go too much into garlics because that's a whole area. You can talk days on garlics. <laughs> about six different uh, main varieties of garlic, all with different varieties. And uh, no, another day. But is it too late to plant it now? I notice you've got quite a few. Depending on the variety, no. You've yeah. got something purple out there. Purple yeah, you've got, um, got dynamite purple and things, which is a really strong one. Uh, no, you can plant pretty much any time. Uh, well, especially when you've already started them going. Yeah, you plant, yeah, just plant. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, they're, now they're growing, you just plant them. Mm -hmm. like you plant. That's why we did it that way, just to extend the season. Um, but if it's starting to sprout, you've got some organic garlic at home. Yeah, pop it. Mm -hmm. pop it. Easy to grow. I found, Better than I found the, the garlic that I just get from the shops, yep. uh, organic shops, uh, seems to work much better than buying buying cloves of special seed garlic because okay. they're small and they stay small. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The only problem we have with that is because, um, like Tenny talking to Penny the other day when she came and, and talked to us about garlic, um, they've managed to get saved 120 species or varieties of garlic that we have in the country mm -hmm. um, and because they're going quickly they're going to they're going to be gone before we know it because the only garlic they're getting in the supermarkets now is from Argentina mm -hmm. China mm -hmm. all these places it's no good for you it's all been methyl, methyl bromide mm -hmm. it's, the nutrient content's just not there mm -hmm. they're not strong varieties and they're not local varieties mm -hmm. and so if we don't sort of start concentrating on some of the varieties, the individual varieties, because some will grow here, some will grow up north New, northern New South Wales quite well. So that's that's the reason why you've got the diversity. And they've been collecting them and they've actually managed to save a whole lot. So if you can buy them, I mean, I've got some varieties, the main varieties, and I want to keep those clear. So is Diggers. Diggers are doing the same thing. They've got a much better collection than I do. I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, but in the whole garden, you can't have a collection. Exactly. Huh? In the whole garden, you 
garden, you can't have a collection. No, but you can have a certain varieties that are going to suit your climate and your taste. Mm. Whether it's going to be mild or hot, whatever you need. Mm. Everybody yeah. can pretty much grow so at least a couple ones? of varieties. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And mild as well. Um, which brings me on very nicely, thank you, to this one, which is a Japanese garlic. Really, very closely related, funny enough, you can sort of tell, to the leeks. Very similar, you know, they share a common ancestry. But they actually, and they grow a lot bigger. And they're similar in to the, to the Russian garlics and that type of varieties, they produce that round and clove techniques, again. Um, but they, they tend to multiply up quite readily and you can actually harvest them and, and treat them like a, 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 a actual, um, like a slightly spicy onion. They're quite mild mm. yeah, when you eat them like that. But if you leave them and they go back then, they are really strong garlic. Mm. Really, really strong. But they're a lot easier to grow than, if people have got problems growing garlic, I recommend the Japanese one. Do they clump or do they They clump up. Yeah, clump. you just yeah. replant them and yeah. plant them away the and Really, really good things, and the, I mean the nutritional benefits of garlic are well known. Mm -hmm. I won't go into, but even more so if you're going to grow your own, it's going to be really good. I recommend everybody. We've got to, we've got to start these stop these imports. Mm -hmm. Everybody can grow some garlic. Mm -hmm. Easy. If everybody grew garlic, that would be really good message. So John, if you're harvesting your garlic, say November, December, or something, December. And, and if you divide and you plant it straight away, that's okay through the summer, or should you keep the Keep it dry, out, keep yeah, keep it dry it out, then replant. Yeah. Depending on, um, there's no um, guide to when to plant what variety. Okay. And that's yeah. um, Penny Woodward, who I keep talking, yeah. is actually um, organising a planting guide wow. for all the different varieties and harvest guide for all yeah. the different mm -hmm. varieties that, they, that they're growing. Yeah. Um, which will be available in a new book coming out soon. So, <laughs> I'm not getting royalties. I just think it's really important. Yeah. Um, I do like royalties. Yeah. Her other books are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's a great lady. She's uh, got a good website too. And she's Australian. And she's she's Australian. She lives in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah she's local. Yeah, exactly. She's yeah. down on the peninsula. Yeah. I think. Really, they're a, a permanent plant. They're a, a true perennial plant, but they're really pretty. You can get the variegated form like this one, or you could green form. Yeah. Um, nutritionally, no idea again, no idea, but they're really strong. You only need to get a leaf and um, yeah, you'll know it big time. So use it sparingly. But um, by themselves, they're a beautiful cottage garden plant. Mm -hmm. uh, or just as if they use them as a border sometimes in cottage gardens, they used to. Um, beautiful mauve flowers, really attractive to insects, multi-purpose. So, um, nutritionally, no idea, but it tastes wonderful. And, and, and they're also garlicky flavour. Very, very drought tolerant. And if you dig them up, the, the roots are really thick and solid for such a little plant. Like yes, they keep water in there. You, 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 you could kill them by heavy shade, I reckon. That'd be bad. But they're, yeah, they're solid. Yeah. So they wouldn't die down? No, they're them. permanent like this. They go off a little bit in autumn, I think, so um, but not by much. You don't, it, as a as a as a plant, we could just tidy them up and away you go. But you um, eat the root as well, or mostly just leaves. Leaf. Yeah. The, the interesting thing with the research I've been doing prior to this talk is um, a lot of the nutrients are actually in the leaf, more so than the bulbs. Mm. 